So much chaos going on in the hospital at the time. There was so little information. Are they suffering? Are they not suffering? Mamish mentioned was a Are they going to make it? Kids went to sleep at night with the worst nightmares. So many patients were left alone. I was there with my father and my mother, and I saw it. Families didn't get a chance to say goodbye. They've been very, very helpless. The pain with Pukha Gai Dara, unbelievable. I want to do something. I can't do anything. In some cases, it might be dangerous to be close to the hospital bed, though there should be something that could be done. I got a phone call from some guy who introduced himself as Joe Friedman. He wanted to know what can be done. At the beginning, I didn't know what we're getting ourselves into. Sooner than later, I realized that this is something that will hopefully and potentially bring people home from the hospital successfully. It doesn't matter for what reason you're in the hospital, you cannot have a visitor. Instead of focusing on treating the patient, they were focused on connecting them with family outside of the hospital. Not everyone has access to smartphones or tablets. We decided that the only viable option would be supplying tablets to people. Most of the people that were in the hospital were more elderly people or middle-aged people that are not so tech-savvy people. We realized that we cannot just take any tablet off the shelf, put on a video conference, and it will work. Some people were already on respirators and couldn't really get to operate the phone or tablet whatsoever. There's no plug-and-play system. We have to go with building the technology ourselves. Went to developers trying to figure out what the best path would be. My role in that has been on the technical side, standing up the infrastructure and the server stacks and to write the application. One of the things we had to make sure is that we meet all HIPAA guidelines and compliances. So we had to have specific hardware that we can manipulate and control. We had never done anything like WellTab because it's so unique and making an application like this that can get to market very quickly. We launched like a couple of hours before the Zaman Pesach. We had a whole stack of devices ready to go. We sent them over the tablet, gave it to their IT department, and they reviewed and they saw that. We met with all their standards to make sure that they allow it. I set up a Wi-Fi network and we started peering devices. Assemble devices, program the devices automatically. We can sit in the parking lot, but the hospital tries to have the best connection we can have the Wi-Fi from the hospital. We were there to provide them with Wi-Fi cards to connect them to Wi-Fi when they don't have internet at home or when their internet is not strong enough for a video call. A whole crew of people across multiple hospitals registering devices and taking devices from one hospital to the other to make sure they all register. In the two weeks, far Pfizer is not Pfizer, but in the team of the set about 700 tablets. In the Pfizer, I've been in the field. I met with a full established company. We were actually on a, a daily deployment schedule where we would have a whole new version every morning. It made the user interface more advanced. All they got to know is press power on and it's working. And with a long time, the tablet and the spatool, the group gave up every Wi-Fi and every spatool. We eventually went to hospitals in upstate, all over the United States, in Canada, Europe. It was a total member that mentioned to us. I tell us that's tremendous work. There's only that much they could do to take the patient to the hospital. What goes on thereafter is out of their hands. We reached such a critical product in such a critical time. And one month Shabbos, we got a call from a lady who told us her father unfortunately passed away during Shabbos. But she was able to say goodbye to her father on Friday afternoon with, through the tablet. So without the tablet, she wouldn't be able to be Michael herself for not saying goodbye, for not seeing your father was the first time actually I connected a tablet. It was amazing to see the reaction from the family. I think it was a bit yet that it had to be written. But the verb, die heer smig, die heer dig, die heer smig. Om ik kan zijn live dimensions betool, is het eraan gebracht aan moeder die gelichtigheid in jeden stem. That phone call when they finally connected. That oh, we see our father. That's something that is just indescribable. We actually had a family who didn't believe that the father is alive until they actually saw him. There was one day a woman says she doesn't see her husband. The tablet is broken. I ran over to her house and made it work. Matzah Shabbos, she calls in. And she says, I want to let you know that Shabbos morning, my husband had a seizure. This tablet rescued my husband. 
you were able to see a doctor was there, you can hear what the doctor has to say. And I took the connection with people who have, with the outside world, it go very well there. Now they were able to participate in somebody's, uh, in, a, in a dinner at the family home and they could see the children run around and, and it just changed their lives. The concept of connecting a patient to their home environment is the strongest healing that there is. That by itself kept us driven and kept us going to continue doing our work. It's really going to be the new standard of care in hospitals globally. I've never seen a project move this fast. Typically as a company, it would take a couple of months to create, to create such an app. The coherent team message that we're here to help everyone, that we're here to help the situation. People donated their time, their business. Everyone brought their own talents to the table. By the hospital seeing how much we care, they all understood what we do, they found it important, and they allowed us into the hospitals. That in itself is tremendous work. Everybody does amazing volunteer work and amazing cases, but there's still behind the scene a lot of things that have to be paid. The mobile network by itself is a cost of in the range of $50,000 per month and this is still growing. The crisis we're going through in the hospitals right now is something that we're facing for quite a bit of time. Policies at hospitals and healthcare facilities are not changing as of yet. It doesn't seem like if it's ever gonna go back to normal, nursing homes don't have any visitations whatsoever. Some hospitals give you two hours, three hours, four hours, but not more than four hours a day. You never know when the moment is when a patient needs comfort at their bedside. Every patient who's in a nursing home or in a hospital at this point needs a tablet, and we keep on getting requests every day. We have uh, close to 1,500 tablets that are circulating around. We have distribution centers in 15 different locations all over the United States. We have distribution in England and in Israel. Basically, wherever there's a need for it, we're there. We are, I believe, the number one high-tech organization there is. This technology in this new way has really opened our eyes to what's possible. Thanks to a well tab. It's a company that was created after the pandemic changed hospital rules with no visitors allowed and no way to easily keep in touch with loved ones. Well, a group of Hasidic Jews created the software and putting it on a thousand pairs of tablets that are being used in New York and across the country. I'm still at, at all at what we have achieved. This came from the heart and soul of people. We were blessed to be a part of it. Thanks to all those volunteers that literally worked with the the Snayfish to get this delivered. It really is inspiring. I really hope that it's inspiring to others. This tablet was saving lives. 